Welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to be making this really easy zipper pouch. I was able to get my hands on some Barbie fabric licensed by the Riley Blake Designs, the fabric company that I also work with. So we're going to be doing a hot pink outside and look at these cute little shoes we're going to put inside. Of course, you can use any fabric that you want, but I thought it would be fun to use this while we all are in hot pink Barbie movie mania. Let's get started. To get started, you need some materials. So to make a bag this size, which has a finished size of about six inches by 10 inches, and I did put about a one inch box pleat on the bottom of that, we're going to take two pieces of fabric, outside, inside, 10 and a half inches wide by 14 and a half inches long. If you're using a directional fabric, you need your fabric to be going this way because the bag is going to fold like this. I have already added fusible fleece to the back of our lining just to save time. And I used the Pellon 987F fusible fleece. It's one that I just always keep on hand. I like it just to give a little bit more stiffness and body to bags and different projects. Then I'm going to use a pink zipper. You can use a nine to, you know, like a nine inch zipper, but I often like to use zippers that are longer than my project, especially if you are new to zippers. This is going to be easier for you to sew on because you will be able to get your zipper completely out of the way as long as you have it lined up correctly. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm also going to share my trick for how to make zippers sewing easier using this Easy Steam 2 two-sided adhesive fusible tape. This thing, game changer. It took the stress of zippers away. Absolutely love it. Then we have cut a piece that is 15 inches by two inches for the little strap. I have a little lobster clasp on a D-ring to put on that. And then you just need a little piece for this little loop here that you can hook things onto. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get these ends out of the way. So I'm gonna open this a little bit just so it's not in the way of us dealing with those ends. I'm gonna grab my Easy Steam Adhesive. I'm gonna put a little piece right on the top here, and then you're just gonna press down on that. And then you're gonna just carefully peel the paper off of it. Sometimes you have to get your nail or even a pin under it just to get the sticky part to come off and stay on the zipper. Then we are going to fold that tab down and it's going to have to go at an angle so that it doesn't cover the metal part of the zipper stop. Now if you don't have this adhesive you could glue that down. You could also use a pin and go put a little stitch in that to hold it down but this really works great and I love this stuff for the next part of the zipper so I highly rec recommend that you give it a try. Okay so we have them both tacked down. You want to put your lining fabric which you have your fusible fleece or interfacing on face up on your workspace. Then you're going to open your zipper wider than the fabric and we're going to flip it over for right now and we're going to put the Easy Steam to tape along the back of the zipper and take the paper off. Now we're gonna turn it back over so that the zipper pull is up and we're going to line this up with the top edge of our lining fabric. And you want the metal zipper part to be about a quarter inch to five eighths of an inch from the edge of your fabric. When you have that lined up nicely, nice and straight along the top edge, you're going to press down and adhere that to the fabric. And you can move it a little bit. You can see it looks a little bit crooked. So we're gonna just keep adjusting till it looks nice and straight. Now we're gonna grab another piece of this tape and we're gonna go across the top. And this is what we're going to attach the outer fabric to. You don't want it to be too close to the zipper teeth. You want it to be towards the outer edge where we're going to be sewing. Now we're going to take our outer fabric. We're gonna turn it over. We're gonna make sure that we pay attention and get it lined up so it's, it's staying straight over top of the lining. And we're going to line up this top edge right over top of the zipper and press down. This, my friends, is a game changer in the zipper business. If you don't have this and you wanna do the zipper, you can also put the three together and clip it, but you have a lot more chance of things moving a little bit as you're sewing if you're just clipping versus 
adhering it like this. Now we're going to sew the zipper. We're going to keep the pull way out here so it's not going to get in the way at all. This piece is just going to hang off. I'm going to use a zipper foot and you're just going to sew right along the edge so that this zipper will be in straight. So now we have that for the one side. I'm going to take this really quick to my ironing board and I'm going to press it so that both sides are pulled away from the zipper and then we are going to come back and top stitch. I just pressed that so it's nice and even. Now we're with the zipper foot still in, I'm just going to run a quick top stitch right along the edge. I'm going to keep using the white thread. You can change to a hot pink if you want to or whatever color coordinates, totally up to you. One side is done. Let's head back to the workstation and I'll show you how to line up the other side of the zipper. Now we need to do the same thing, tape these two fabrics onto this half of the zipper. So let's get started. We need to close the zipper halfway just to make sure we have all of the teeth lined up evenly because if we don't have the teeth lined up evenly, when we attach this, then the zipper's not gonna work and everything's gonna pull. You make sure the metal's gonna be lined up, everything's good to go. We're going to run a piece of this tape along the top of the zipper at this outer edge. Okay, gonna get that tape on, then make sure you have the zipper lined up again. And now what we are going to do is we are going to fold our outer fabric up and before we attach it we want to make sure that it's staying straight along this edge and then we need to get it lined up with that edge of the zipper so sometimes it's a little bit easier to turn it over to be able to see exactly where we're going so don't press firmly until you know that you have everything lined up well so now you'll see we have this loop of the outer fabric and now we need to deal with the inner fabric so we're going to turn that back over again and we're going to put the tape along this side of the zipper. Now we're going to fold this side up, making sure again it's staying lined up on both sides and that the top is lined up with the edge of the zipper and the top of the outer fabric, basically making a zipper sandwich. And again, if you don't have this tape, you can do the same thing and use pins or clips. So this is what it looks like on the side. We basically have two loops of fabric and the zipper. And because we have this nice and secure where we want it, and we are using a longer zipper so that that pull isn't in our way while we sew, I'm gonna reach my hands in here and I'm going to open that zipper. So I'm gonna pull that out so it is not in our way. I'm gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew this zipper just like we did the last one. Now we're gonna use our zipper foot and sew this zipper. Now I'm going to turn this right side out and I'm going to press that and bring it back to top stitch just like we did last time. Now we're going to make the little loop for attaching things like this little wristlet, which we are also going to be making. So we have our fabric. This is one and a half by two and a half for the loop. And this one is 15 by two for the wristlet. I don't keep water in my iron. I like to just mist with a little sprayer bottle. Do you use steam with your iron or do you add water externally? Let me know in the comments. I would love to know what your preference is and if you have a reason. Okay, so we're gonna fold that in half, iron that, and that's going to create a nice little crease for us. We're gonna open that back up and then we're gonna fold these raw edges into the crease. And on this one that is so small, you can just finger press that outer edge, fold it again, and press again. All right, so that one is ready. Now we're going to make the wristlet strap. I'm gonna put it like this, and I've already spritzed this with water. So because this one is so long, it's next to impossible to get it straight and finger press. So I'm gonna do each side at a time, folding that raw edge into the crease and pressing along that edge without pressing the center crease out of my fabric. So you're just kind of using the tip and moving along. Have you ever used a tailor's clapper? It's really cool. I'm gonna show you what it does. So a tailor's clapper or a quilter's clapper is basically a piece of wood that has this nice groove that's really easy to hold and it helps you really set your creases. A lot of quilters really like it because when they're pressing seams open, it gets a nice sharp edge to it. I like to use it for things like this too 
because as you go along, sometimes it pops up a little bit. So if you come back with this wood, it takes the heat out of it and you press down and it keeps it really flat and it makes that fold a lot sharper. Now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine. We're gonna just do a quick stitch here so that we can make that loop when we put the whole bag together. And I'm gonna show you how to sew this together and get the lobster clasp with the D-ring on this piece. So we're just gonna run a stitch really close to the edge to keep this together. And this is going to be the little loop for the bag. Now we are going to do the wristlet loop that is going to have this on here. So we are going to go down the edge to sew this fold together so that our raw edges are never to be seen again. And we're going to leave about an inch to an inch and a half open on each end. Okay, so for our wristlet, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the clasp onto the fabric. Then we are going to open these ends and we are going to pin them with the right sides together. Now we are just going to sew with a quarter inch seam across that front. I never sew across pins because I have hit more than I care to and bent needles. Do you live dangerously and sew across pins or do you take them out as you sew? Let me know in the comments. Go back to your iron and press this seam open and then press this folded closed again so that you can stitch and finalize that and it won't be really visible how you got this loop put together. So I'm gonna go do that and be right back. Before I do this stitch to get these all together. I wanna to make sure one more time that it's not twisted. If it is twisted, just grab your seam ripper, open that up and redo it. I'm just going to finish this edge stitch, turn that so it is coming out of the circle. Then you're just going to fold right like that. So we have that seam that we just sewed right there at that D-ring. And now I'm just gonna run a little stitch here to hold that in place. Now we have our detachable Barbie wristlet that you can use on this bag or other things. Let's go finish up that bag. We're getting so close. Now what we're going to do is we're going to close this zipper halfway so that the zipper pull is on the inside and the lining is on the outside. And we are going to move it because it's basically just a big old roll, right? A roll with a zipper. We're going to move it to however high you want your zipper to be from the top. This one that I did, it's about an inch and a half down. I think I'm going to try this one a little bit higher. So I'm going to make it about an inch from that top fold. Now we're going to make sure that these edges are all lined up. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put two pins up here to make sure that this zipper stays in place. And I'm gonna put them in far enough that I don't have to take them out while I'm sewing. But we wanna make sure that these little metal hooks stay lined up. Then, always handy to have one as a sample, right? I like to have the hook on the opposite side of where the zipper is closed. So when this zipper is closed, it's gonna be over here. So we are going to put this loop over here above the zipper. Speaking of the zipper, it is time to cut it off. Just a plastic zipper teeth. So you can cut it with scissors, but don't use your fabric scissors. You don't want to mess them up. Use some craft scissors and just cut that off even with the edge. So we're done. Thank you very much. Little zipper piece that made our zipper life easier. Off you go. So now this I'm going to fold in half. The raw edges, I'm going to line up with these raw edges and I'm going to just put that right in there above the zipper. And I'm going to clip that with a clip. I'm going to clip both sides in place and we're going to sew straight down here and then we're going to zigzag. Now you need to decide if you're going to do just a flat bag, you're just going to start sewing now. But see on this one, I gave it a little bit of a box corner. So if you want to do that, we're going to make some marks now. To make a one and a half inch box pleat, you're going to measure up three quarters of an inch. So you're going to measure up from the bottom half the distance that you want your bag to be wide. So if you wanted it to be three inches wide, you're going to measure up an inch and a half. So that would be a much deeper box and shallower bag. So we're going to do three quarters of an inch. And I'm just going to take this pen. It's a heat sensitive pen. It will disappear when you iron it. It's really cool. Oh, great. I picked right at a pink shoe. Of course I did. So we can see that. And I'm just marking this now to save some time because we're going to go straight all the way down. But then when we zigzag, we're only going to go to this line. 
because we need to be able to make that box. And because I'm not sure which side I'm going to have to fold it, I'm going to mark it on both sides. Okay, we're in the home stretch, back to the sewing machine. Now we're gonna go straight down with a quarter inch seam. And if we, you lined this up correctly, you should be on just on this side of these metal things. Just go really slow when you're going over the zipper part and make sure you do not hit that metal or you will definitely have a broken needle. And I do like to go backwards over the zippers just to make sure it is nice and secure. And now we're gonna do the other side. Now on this side, we are going to be sewing through some of those plastic teeth. So just go really slowly. And also remember that the little, the little loop is right here. So we're going to go from here to here. We're gonna go forward, back, and then forward just to secure that zipper and that loop. Just go slow. Now just take a minute and cut off some of these frayed edges before you do your zigzag. You can also take out these pins now. All right, can you see my needles right here? I'm gonna to switch to a zigzag stitch and you'll see it moved over to the right. And that is basically gonna be the outside of the zigzag. So I'm gonna have that needle position right off the edge of my fabric. And then I'm just going to zigzag all the way to this line. Now, if you were keeping it flat, it's time to turn it, but we're going to do these little boxed corners. So what we're going to do, so you're gonna make it a triangle right at that line. So it's even on both sides, and then you're just going to stitch across in a straight line. It's all over except the turning right side out. We're going to start to flip it, and then I like to just put my hand in here and open that zipper more, because it just makes it that much easier. I'm gonna open those beautiful box corners, and then we're going to flip and push out those top corners. And there's our little loop. You're gonna hook this on here. So how would you use a bag like this? Would you put makeup in it? You could use it in your car. This could also be super cute for a slumber party favor. Fill them with like some candy, a hairbrush, maybe a scrunchie or a sleep mask. I'd love to know what you think you would use this kind of a bag for. Drop me a comment. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you never miss a thing.